What's up, everybody? Okay, today we're going to have a little brief conversation about the aluminum rear sprocket hub. I've seen a lot of people say they don't care for them because they slip on the hub and tear up your spokes. But I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be that way. So allow me to explain. If you put your hub, as you see in my hand, together, and there is no gap where it goes together, see where it moves? There is no gap they are touching. There is absolutely no way to tighten that more if it is on your hub already to not spin. Both sides are touching and they're not going to tighten anymore to grip into the steel or the aluminum of your brake hub on your bike right there. So let me tell you about a couple cures. Drilling a hole and trying to put a set screw in it is not good. That just damages and ruins your brake hub or wheel. Trying to grind a keyway in there, I've also heard folks say. Once again, not a good plan. Going to damage your hub and brake assembly. And uh, pretty much turn your rim, rim into junk. Another thing I've heard people do, I'm not a fan of it. I just don't see it working very much or very long in longevity. Uh, wrapping rubber or some type of material around your hub to swell the hub to make it fatter so that it, this will grip onto it better. And I just don't get into that. Like putting rubber between the frame and your engine mount, thinking that is going to lessen some vibration in some way or form. It's not going to help on this wheel because it's eventually going to turn or you're going to tighten it so much it's going to bend stuff and that's just not the way these are designed to operate. So allow me to get this thing on here and I will explain to you how to make it work correctly for those that are having problems. Okay, I don't have it bolted in there for the sake of this video, but if you notice, it, I personally have this fleshly pressed against the hub and I have a gap same thing with the top it is sitting flush on there and I have a gap so when I tighten the bolts it will squeeze this hub firmly against the Drake drum hub bunch of hubs going on and I don't need to put any material between it it's going to touch a spoke you don't want it turning and yanking on the spokes so we want it to firmly be mounted right where you see it. But yes, you want a gap. If the hub you've purchased goes on your wheel and it does not have a gap, you're going to need to give it one. That is not a super hard thing to do. So let me get this thing back out of here and I will show you how to do it. Well, I'll give you the suggestion how to do it. I can't do it to this one because it works all right already, so I'm not going to do that. But I will give you the suggestion on how to make yours work. As I stated in the beginning, if the hub you purchased online, wherever you got it from, is on your bicycle hub and there is no gap, there is no way to make this tighter. And it's spinning on your hub. The easy cure for that is... One, don't use your top side. Use whatever side the bolt heads do not are not machined to go down inside of. Because you can see there's not much material there to work with. As soon as I turn it so you can see that. There's not a lot of material there to work with on the top side of this one. But you have a little more material on the bottom side. So you can take a surface grinder, a belt sander, and grind one side keep it flat as you can you can even put it on a belt sander and take a little of this material off of here which will shrink the hub and give you a little gap and now when you put it on the bicycle it will clamp down on the hub like it's supposed to and have a little gap at the finish instead of being completely flush and be completely out of grip this way you take a little material off of it give yourself a little gap 
everything should still fit properly and your hub will not spin on the brake drum. Same thing goes for if you do it on a freewheel rim and you get the inch size pulley. Just take a little material off here and here and maybe on that side, depends on what, you know, your needs are. That will shrink the hole. Just to give you an idea. And now it will fit tighter on your drum. And you don't have to spend hours trying to wrap metal around there. And it's going to keep slipping. Same thing with a piece of rubber. The rubber's just going to mush. Might give you a little grip for a little bit, but it's just not the correct way to do it. All right, hopefully this helps somebody out. I am a big fan of the aluminum sprocket hub mounts. They do turn a lot straighter than the rag joint. Through time, the rubber does not shrink and uh, make my rear sprocket loose because those rear rag joints do do that from time to time. They're good in some applications, I'm not totally putting them down, but I prefer, if I can, to rub a, to run a nice aluminum hub mount. After I get it positioned and tightened up, no more maintenance. Never have to touch it again unless you're removing it from the rear wheel. Okay, so hopefully that helps somebody out who uh, was having a fit with their rear, rear hub mount, but wanted the true turning straightness of an aluminum hub mount. Our end result should look something like this. Machined in the center, rear bearing cap still on, dust cover, whatever you like to refer to it on a bike. Sprocket is firmly tightened. Hub mount is on and installed correctly. As I said before, if you do not have a gap on one or both sides, I prefer both, that way I know it's tightened evenly then your aluminum sprocket mount is not gripping your wheel sufficiently. So like I said, if you don't have it like and like that, you can take some material off the top, bottom side and the top side of both sides to cure your problem. Dang it, quit turning. Yep, a surface grinder, any kind of flat grinder, a belt sander, just try to keep it straight as you can to give you a little gap. That way it is clamping, get the middle fingers in there, clamping on the bicycle hub. If you put it on there and it's just finger tight and there's no gap, then tightening that is not going to grip it to your drum assembly or your hub. So if it looks like that, and I'm not going to beat this with a hammer to show everybody that it will not turn no matter how hard you drop your clutch and yank that with the old chain, it's going to work just fine. And once again, the big bonus of the CNC sprocket is how the sprocket turns really true and gives you less chain fits. Once again, there's that gap looking back at you. You have to have the gap or the hub mount will not tighten. So don't waste your time wrapping rubber around there trying to sandwich it in there. Or a piece of metal or brass or copper or, I don't know, hell, plutonium. I don't know if you can make plutonium into a sheet or not, but it sounded good. But anyway, that's what you need. If you order one, it's a Chinese part. They're all Chinese parts. Most of everything on these bikes are Chinese parts. Don't lie to yourself thinking they're not all Chinese parts. So sometimes you got to do a little extra work to make your Chinese part work 100% correctly. In this case, I did not have to, but in some cases you do have to grind the top and the bottom flat spots, flat spaces. I don't know the professional name of where those go together, the butt joint. But now I have this super tight, not crushing the drum, gap in between and it is really gripping the drum 
and I've used these forever and a couple of them I've had to do it to most of them I don't but they have worked perfectly and flawlessly every time all right I hope that helps some people out that are out there frustrated thinking about drilling a hole through the center of that and putting some kind of jam bolt there through your hub or into your hub that doesn't work save your time save the effort save the stress all right, till then, ride safe. I hope this little pointer helps somebody out that wants to run an aluminum hub because they are completely fed up trying to get the rag joint to uh, last or be true, as in straight, keep the chain on. Like I said, they do work on some models and some bikes, but for the most part, they're a huge pain in the butt. All right, ride safe. Till my next exciting video. Take care.